I am standing in the reason why I haven't posted a video in a little while. As you can see, I'm standing in my little greenhouse here. Because I felt I was a little bit behind this spring and getting my greenhouse up and going and I was more concerned about getting my plants in my greenhouse, I didn't take the time to set up and film as I was building this greenhouse. But now that I have caught up, I am going to give you a good tour. From an old greenhouse that my dad had taken down years ago, we had some square tubing, so I used that square tubing as my frame and structure in my greenhouse. It's all around square tubing, and I did use a few treated pieces of wood for angle bits that I had placed to screw my polycarbonate into. I used a twin wall polycarbonate as the outside shell of the greenhouse. The square footage in here on the floor is 10 by 10, so 100 square feet. I have a little hip on the outside border of the greenhouse on the two sides, and this is going against the fence. And the reason is so that I have a space in between my property and the fence line above the fence, but I'm utilizing the space on the ground all the way up to the fence. I wanted to utilize this space as best as possible, so I made this hip high enough that I can put 200 liter barrels underneath it. I have some 55 liter barrels here as well. I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the plants that I'm growing in here. First here as we walk in, we got mini cucumbers, and we harvested a bunch of them already and there is a new wave coming and you can kind of see them they're just still small in here yet after that we got a few different types of tomatoes so this first one this tallest one here is a cherry tomato after that we got a beef steak and then a san marzano tomato and another cherry tomato and then some more beef steak tomatoes On the back row here, we have a beefsteak tomato that is a determinant variety tomato. All the other ones are indeterminates. This is a determinant variety, so there is a little bit different pruning I'll have to do in here and get more creative in the trellising as I am a little bit tight for space. I kind of wish this greenhouse was bigger, but I only had a 10 by 10 cement pad in the corner of my yard already. And so that was the maximum square footage that I could go in this plot. After that, I have some peppers. These are sweet bell peppers, first three plants here. It's all a little packed in, a little tight for them. So I'm going to go with single heads going up on these. These are reds. Next to them, I have some hot Fresno peppers. Um, the peppers are the smallest, and I'm really thinking that this vent has a lot to do with that. Uh, the cool air comes right down on these plants here and I think the peppers want a little bit more heat so hopefully as the season goes on the temperatures rise outside and they get a little bit more heat units. After that we got some more cherry tomatoes and keeping the tags in the bottom here so that I can verify later on which tomato plants are which. So these first two here are Sakura, they're cherry tomatoes. And then later on I got some more beefsteak and some San Marzano tomatoes. A little bit more on the structure of the greenhouse. So I have a vent here. This is on my side wall, west facing, and I have this temperature operated wax cylinder and you can see it's fairly cool outside and cool inside. It was a cloudy day today and it's in the evening here. It's only a crack open. Um, these are adjustable so by turning this knob here I can open it a little bit more and it might change the temperature setting by a few degrees. So I have one side vent and up top, you can hardly see it because I have some row cover up top there. Let's see if I can get an angle here. 
to show you. Maybe I'll just put the camera above. So I have a, another vent on top going the full length of the roof and it's about two feet by nine feet long. So one of the main reasons why I went with a greenhouse that's made to fit this plot and not with a kit was two reasons. I couldn't utilize the space I had in a proper fashion with a kit because I had a 10 by 10 plot and I couldn't find a reasonably priced 10 by 10 greenhouse. One of the other major reasons why I built my own greenhouse was I wanted the height. So for these tomatoes, these determinant variety tomatoes in the corner here, they'll only grow like five, six feet tall. The indeterminates can really grow on proper conditions, even 40 feet, maybe not in this greenhouse, but these plants will need more than eight feet. So I'll be laying them down, but I wanted that maximum height possible. And some of these kits are only about seven feet tall to the peak. This greenhouse is 11 feet tall to the peak and that gives me a lot more space above to grow. On the ground here you can see I have coconut bags on top of a gutter and this gutter was also used from a leftover piece from my dad's commercial greenhouse. So just a small piece there and basically that collects all the runoff from the bags and channels it down to the end and into this PVC pipe at the end there. And then from there, it goes into my drain pit. And basically, I have a plastic barrel that I cut in half here and cut a hole in the cement pad and jam that in there and that way I can collect all the runoff from the plants and have my floor dry. So, so far the floor has stayed really dry and that's good because you don't get algae and whatnot growing on the floor. To trellis my tomatoes, peppers and cucumbers up, I put some wires across the frame up top. They're about eight feet high and I ran them across this also doubled as my row cover cover. And the reason why I put the row cover up there was that in the beginning, the very first few days I had my cucumbers in here, they were starting to show a lot of heat stress and it was getting 30 degrees in here. And you can still see the lower leaves of these cucumber plants that were heat stressed and upper leaves are looking really, really good here. Um, this polycarbonate is new and it's so clear, it lets so much light in and so much heat that these plants were just not prepared for that level of intensity as they were just growing indoors before that. So I have a few barrels here and these first two barrels I have as just passive heat storage doubling as a table. They don't conduct a lot of heat in and out because it's plastic. I think a metal barrel would conduct a little bit better. On top here I have a mini flood table I made and I'm just starting a few plants here and I am growing some extra lettuce that did not fit in the grow tower and it's just doing fine up here on the flood table. In here I have a small submergible pump and pumps it up into the up and into the black spout there and as it overflows it can go back down into the white spout there that only runs for a short period of time and I unplug it as I do not have it on a switch or a timer yet I just unplug it and then the water drains all back into the barrel so there's really no standing water in this tray which is good up top here I have a little bench that I made, a little gutter, and these bags are sitting on top of this gutter which I put some polycarbonate in there, siliconed it in there, rocks underneath so that it can drain 
gravity fed down to the bottom, drains into my flood table, and then back into this barrel. That way I collect the water. This big barrel in the corner is my feed barrel with a 55 liter backup. So I make my fertilizer in this big barrel. Um, before it, the barrel is empty, I'll pump some into the small barrel and then I will switch with the valves. I will switch where I'm sucking water from and this allows me to let the temperature rise in the water of the big barrel before I start using it so I don't give my plants a shock from the cold water. So I'll give you a little tour of the irrigation setup here. This is the feed barrel like I just explained. There's a backup barrel and the line is going in and up and into this little filter. Filters are important for any pumps and drip irrigation as this is all drip irrigation. So here's my filter, it comes up through here first and then into this pump. And this pump is a three and a half gallon roughly per minute pump and it has a pressure switch at 60 psi. So it pumps my system up to 60 psi and I have a little storage tank. I think it's a four and a half gallon little pressure tank and that's really important as before I had the pressure tank the pump was running on off on off on off and that was not great for my system. So with this pump here and a pressure tank now it will run and then it will be off while it's irrigating and once the pressure drops below its set point the pump kicks back on. So it's not running on off on off all the time. Now it's running for a little while and then it's off for a minute and then it runs again for a minute. I have these little irrigation solenoid valves and they control the water going to each of my zones. So I actually have the cucumbers peppers and tomatoes on their own separate zone so I can give the cucumbers more water or less water and the and vice versa to all the plants uh, based on their species. All this is controlled through a hunter oops I was not open I was locking it this will cooperate now and open Through a Hunter HydroWise, I really like this little irrigation controller. It's a Pro HC. This is a, the six model because it has six zones. I am right now using four of the zones: three for my tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers, and one for my herb bench up here. So this controller can regulate the water based on temperature and that gives me a little bit of flexibility on self automation. I'll make a separate video explaining this controller more in detail but I'm really happy with it. I have some feed lines from outside I can connect my garden hose to that it runs right across straight into my barrel with a the valve there I can fill my water barrels up from outside I don't have to drag a hose to the door. I've really tried to make this as convenient as possible. I am in this greenhouse for the long run and I figure if I spend the time now that will save me time down the road that is worth it. So I've tried to make things as convenient as possible. I also have a little goofy thermometer here and I gave it a little shade shelter out of plastic so that the sun does not beat on it and give me a false reading so it data records and I have a video up about that thermometer as well I'll put a link in the description below so I have a few extra of herbs and other plants like spinach and a marigold growing here and it's just a little bit of extras that I had and I didn't have room for so I figured I'll put them in a pot and I can always decide what to do with it later this coconut husk is actually leftover of old bags and I really like using that stuff as mulch or a growing media. I had a bunch of strawberries here that I 
intend on putting in a grow tower and I just have not got around to finish building my grow towers yet which will be placed in here. I'm not sure exactly how and where yet but probably at the end wall right here I'll probably put a grow tower or two. These strawberries I'm planning to put in there. Right now they're also in this coconut mulch and they seem to be doing all right. They're packed in there very tightly which is not ideal but they're surviving so hopefully that will be fine. These little drippers they give out about um, four liters per hour for water so then you kind of know if you run your irrigation controller for five minutes you can do the math and figure out how many liters your plants are getting. On the leaves here you can actually see a bit of whiteness on the edges and that's actually some soap that I've been spraying on the leaves to battle the thrips that I had on here and so far it seems to be working and I'm not seeing any thrips on here in the last few days so the good dose of soap has definitely helped. Underneath I figured why not intercrop a few plants so I have some chives growing down here got some New Zealand spinach and some basil, some dill, some parsley and some celery and it's just all herbs that are edible or beneficial to the greenhouse. So the reason why I hacked the hole in the concrete was for my drainage and the other reason for that was that I can put a sump pump in here, pump out that water and also I'm going to recirculate that water into my grow towers. So the water that leaches out of the plants on my gutters will flow down into these pipes into the barrel and that will go through the grow tower and that will be recycled that way. Every once in a while I will pump that empty, give it some fresh fertilizer and then I'll just put the water that is nutrient rich that has leached out and I'll just put that on the flower beds outside. You can kind of see them through the plastic here. I have some tulips still growing. It's early in the spring here. So that is a little bit of a tour of my greenhouse here. I'll keep you regularly updated on the growing progress. I will show you some clips of the construction while I did take a few pictures and video. I didn't do a lot, but yeah, you'll see a few of the shots here of the construction of the greenhouse. If you have any questions, post them below. I will answer them best I can. So thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Follow the channel. Post some links down below to my Instagram and my Facebook page. Feel free to ask any questions and I'll help you out as best I can.